inevitably you're going to notice that after a couple of months you're going to see that inspect cell light is going to start flashing and this is going to let you know that it's time to do some preventative maintenance to ensure that your soil chlorinator is going to continue to run optimally. The uh, inspect cell light starts flashing every three months to remind you that it's time to inspect a cell. There are other reasons why it would flash, but even if there's nothing wrong with it, every three months is just going to be a reminder to take that cell out and have a look at it. Even the big sticker on the cell tells you every three months, inspect and clean if necessary. But before we actually touch anything, a reminder, this is 24 volts and 5 amps well, when running at maximum. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do before we do anything is cut the mains power to this entire unit. That doesn't mean shutting off the pump. That means mains power. I continue to be of the opinion that this is the only safe way to work on anything on the pool with regard to electricity, right? I just shut it all off and I don't worry about it because none of this is worth dying over, I assure you. Furthermore, there are capacitors and some things take longer to discharge than others. We saw that I was able to walk around here a good 20 seconds before it actually shut off. So when you shut it off, you may want to walk away for a little bit before you start getting into touching stuff. So I want to go over some of the things we'll be needing for the job today. Uh, number one is a bucket, which I have uh, cleaned out and dried. I've ensured that there's nothing in here. And I mean washed it out and, and made sure there's no foreign matter in here. It's going to react with the acid, right? Very important. And next to that, I have a bottle of... Uh, muriatic acid which you could pick up at your pool store you should probably have some if you own a swimming pool right uh, some uh, obring lube that I will need when the job is finished another thing you should already have so so far that's all common stuff uh, this one right here and I will post uh, uh, where I got this this is a, a cell stand which will make this process a lot easier there was one I also saw online which I'll also post it was a couple of dollars cheaper and some folks make their own, but for the aggravation of making it your own, I think you save just a few dollars more. So we're going to use this stand and we'll talk about it. And then I have a, just a, a standard measuring cup that I'll use to measure out uh, the chemicals that will be used to do this procedure. Also not shown here are the obvious safety materials that will be used because we're dealing with muriatic acid. And that will be gloves and eye protection. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add four cups of water into here. And I, I live in Florida, I have very hard water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add four cups of filtered water so it doesn't react as much with the uh, muriatic acid during the cleaning stage. If necessary, uh, open the air valve to relieve air pressure. Uh, mine doesn't have any air pressure in it because I already have the system open, but uh, do that too before opening up the uh, salt cell. Now with the power off, I'm going to remove the cell from circuit by unscrewing it, just like that. It'll give a little twist. I set this o-ring in the center of the stand like that before I continue and put that sit down somewhere where I can reach it. Being careful not to dislodge these o-rings right here that are inside these pipes. You can see this black one right here. There's another one right here. And here we have the unit removed. And we do have, upon first inspection, some debris and buildup in this unit. More debris than I thought, right? And uh, that surprised me. The buildup uh, didn't surprise me a whole lot, uh, given Florida and the hard water. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to hit this with the hose and, and try and blow out some of that foreign matter before we put it in the stand. You can see the matter is coming out. Take a look from the other side. There's still some left down there in that corner. But yeah, it's coming out. And this is why you got to be on top of these with the service so that you could address this stuff or the efficiency is going to drop. You can see it's like a, like a hard scale material and that's what the uh, acid is going to remove from here just as soon as we get underway with the next step. We do so just like this, uh, ensuring again that our o-ring is centered right and just screw that right on nice and easy there's a, a holder on the bottom to make the twisting easy to do give that just a little nudge right there you go and now we have a nice 
a liquid tight stand that I'm going to lay on the ground and that will uh, continue this procedure. I'll just wrap the cable around. I have mixed the acid with the water. Four parts water, one part acid. I have done so off camera, but I have ensured that I have added the acid to the water. That is the water was already in the bucket and then I've added the acid to it, not the other way around. Also, I've made sure that I was upwind from the acid vapors. Do not breathe it in. It's terrible. Stay away from it. Be very careful. If you're not sure about what you're doing, then don't do it. Acid is extremely dangerous. I'm now going to pour the acid into the unit and it will be in there for 10 minutes. And there is a reaction. I don't want to get too close with my camera. I'll zoom in there. There's a little bit more acid in the bucket. I just didn't want it to bubble out, right? So I've got just a little bit more to add. But I just wanted to capture that. I'll also point out that when you do add it, there is a vapor that comes up. Again, be very careful. Don't breathe it in. I knew which way the wind was going. It's blowing away from me. I'm gonna let that sit for 10 minutes. And just at around the 10 minute mark, we could see that the reaction is all but subsided. It's just a, a couple of bubbles coming up to the top now. And this is the point where we're going to pour what's in this unit into the bucket. Uh, still carefully because it is acid. I noticed a lot of the uh, debris that I didn't wash out had broke loose as, as the... Uh, pieces between the fins had broken down and allowed that debris to come out and that rest of that will probably be released as it gets its rinse as well which we're going to do next as soon as I get this bucket out of the way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the unit from the bottom I'm going to give the top just a little rinse off here with the shower right just to get any any acid off the top here I may have you accumulated on there be careful not to lose that o-ring either There it is. We can see that the, the inside has cleaned up rather nicely. Most of the deposit looks to be removed. Let me, let me rinse it out and see what we got. Yeah, that did the job. Look at that. See straight through to the other side, all of the calc is removed and the calc that had suspended a lot of the uh, foreign matter. Now gone has released that foreign matter and that is squeaky clean. We're ready to put this back in the unit. I'm going to apply some of the uh, silicon lubricant to uh, both O-rings first. Just a, a thin coat. I've already inspected these O-rings. Everything seems fine. Made sure that they're properly seated. Now I'll place the unit back in. First lining it up. Making sure that I don't unseat an O-ring in the process. Run the connector over. Let's just get it in loosely first. Get this one in loosely. Get my cell in the position I want it in and tighten it down. It's a little slippery. Everything is now tightened down and back in place. I'm done. I will reapply power. Then I check for leaks, ideally through the priming cycle, where there's adequate pressure to check for such things. I didn't find any, or I would have stopped the video and corrected them. Check the tank for air. There we go. Purged. Everything is running. Um, my salt's a little high. With the rains, I depends on what the pool level is going to be. It's not really an issue. Keep that at 20%. For now, we'll see what goes on. Yeah, we'll see what happens this evening. We'll see what the average changes to with the cell cleaned. I've already uh, I've already shut off the inspect cell uh, indicator, so should be good for another three months. I hope you found this Hayward Salt Cell Maintenance video helpful and enjoyable. Thanks for watching. I'm done.